I don't know a single movie fan who doesn't like Back to the Future. It's one of the most beloved movies out there, and it's a movie that only seems to get better with age. Ironic, since it's a movie where time is the primary subject matter. Maybe that's why it's so relatable. Everyone can relate to time. It governs our very existence. Everyone understands the concept of age and how it can totally shift someone's perspective. Not only that, but we also understand choice. It's the choices we make in life that control our destinies. Characters are the foundation of why any movie works. Not just that, but how characters change, or sometimes don't, in order to support a theme. The brilliant thing about Back to the Future is that it presents the audience with a perfect case study in how characters change via the choices they make, and how those choices come to affect their lives in absolutely fundamental ways. Part of the reason the clock tower sequence works so well is that we want to see how George McFly turns out in the future. He started as a loser, became the underdog, and actually overcame his crippling handicap. Most movies would end there, but we get to see the result of George making different choices in his life. So Marty getting back to the future becomes of paramount importance to the audience. We also like Marty. Michael J. Fox's incredible performance was a big part of why that character works so well. He's a kid thrown out of history, and actually excels in a past that doesn't understand him or even necessarily like him. So we have George, someone the audience is kind of turned off by, and then we have Marty, someone the audience is able to fall in love with. It's a perfectly balanced character dynamic, and as Marty works to repair his jeopardized future, he actually gets to know his father in a way that would have never happened in the original 1985. We want to see those two reunited. So again, Marty getting back to the future becomes of paramount importance. And what about Doc? Well. Marty has the ability to go back early and save him from being killed. And since Marty and Doc have a unique and special bond, thanks to the wonderful chemistry between Jay Fox and Christopher Lloyd, you really want to see Marty be able to save his good friend. Another reason for us to root for Marty's success in getting back to the future. If you're sensing a pattern here, that's deliberate. Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale, the film's creators, were very careful to set up one of the most important things in a movie. Stakes. Stakes are exactly what they sound like. The potential for winning or losing something important. The best movies are very clear about what the stakes are for the characters. In Star Wars, if Luke doesn't destroy the Death Star, then the Rebel Alliance will be destroyed and the entire galaxy will be at risk. And the stakes don't have to be huge, they just have to be important to the characters. In Pulp Fiction, if Butch doesn't get his gold watch back, all his father's embarrassing efforts to deliver the watch to him will have been for nothing. Back to the Future stakes are through the roof. If Marty doesn't hit the connecting hook at the precise moment the lightning hits the tower, he'll be stuck in 1955. And all the character development that's been built up to that point, we won't be able to see the result of it. And more than anything, Marty just wants to go home. And we all know that feeling. It's universal. But let's get even more specific. What does the scene itself actually entail? There is a very specific sequence of events that need to happen in order for Marty's trip to be successful. Doc explains the procedure in detail to Marty, who must get it right, and it must be as precise as a wristwatch. This is daunting, and it immediately puts the audience on edge, since there is so much at stake. But then Doc tears up the letter that was to inform him about his future death at the hands of the Libyans. Doc's action here begins a series of another important aspect movies rely on to sell drama. Obstacles. Obstacles are exactly what they sound like, something that's in the way of a person getting what they want. Obstacles create drama, because they prevent characters from attaining their goals, and if the stakes are high enough, the tension can become almost unbearable. In Star Wars, Luke's major obstacle in blowing up the Death Star is Darth Vader, one of the most formidable obstacles of all time. In Pulp Fiction, Butch's obstacle is Marcellus and his henchmen. Doc tearing up the letter is obstacle number one, and notice the blaring wind causing the characters to shout. This heightens the drama and tension even more, and before Marty can tell Doc what the letter was going to say, a tree branch falls and disconnects a cable. Now, the lightning bolt will be useless and Marty won't be able to get back. Obstacle number two and since they only have a few minutes before the lightning bolt hits, it creates an incredible amount of tension and suspense. 
And the third obstacle is a brilliant little representation of the main narrative problem, the idea of time as the movie's main villain. Before Marty can finally tell Doc his future, the clock strikes, causing a deafening noise, not only blocking Marty's efforts, but creating another obstacle for Doc. And now, the car dies, creating a fourth obstacle. This is intercut with Doc's own obstacle as he struggles to get the cable reconnected. The combination of these two obstacles creates an incredible amount of suspense and tension in the audience. I don't know about you, but when I first saw this scene, I could barely contain myself. Then the alarm sounds. Since we know the timing of this event has to be precise, it just adds more suspense to an already unbearably tense scene. Now, even if Marty gets the car started, he may not even make it to the cable in time. Just as Doc finally gets hold of the loose cable, he can't connect it, because it's being blocked by the fallen tree branch. Obstacle number five. Marty is on his way, but he can't connect the cable. Maybe if he pulls hard enough, yeah, no. Obstacle number six. Now, in order to connect the cable, Doc has to get downstairs in time, but Marty is almost there. The film creates yet another obstacle, number seven, this one being time itself. Doc has no time. An apt development considering the movie's theme. And as Marty gets closer and closer, time continues to run out, and Doc must do something. And he does, heroically risking his life for his friend. And it works. Marty successfully goes back in time, and the sequence comes to an end. All the tension that was built up deflating and creating a wonderful sense of accomplishment. Fully fleshed out characters, high stakes, lots of obstacles, and some incredible eye candy. Back to the Future is an absolute masterclass in screenwriting. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe button, as I'll be posting more content in the future. Thanks for watching.